When the world was young, the great shark god Dakawaha swam through the oceans. He met deity after deity after deity, and each one he battled with and he fought with and he overcame them, defeating them not to the death but to gain concessions. And so his territories expanded and expanded and expanded across the oceans, particularly around what would one day become known as the Fiji Islands. Now, back in those days when people set sail to go out upon the waters to fish or to travel to other islands, every so often a storm would whip up and ships would sink, or people would topple overboard. And of course, as soon as these strange creatures, these finless, tailless creatures would fall into the water, there would come Dakawaha ready for a meal, snapping and gulping and chewing and swallowing these wonderful, delicious human beings, till he became the terror of the seas around the Fiji Islands. Now, there came the day when he was asked by one of his fellow gods if he had yet conquered the territories of the Kadava Islands. And he had not, and he said as much the man, ah, said the fellow god, you do realise that the great octopus god, Rocco Bakanekava, has dominion over those islands. Ah! snapped Akawaka. What, what fear is he to me? I will go and defeat him, he's that will bite off his tentacles. I will reduce him to a blob, a mere octopus, what threat is that to me? And he headed off across the ocean, swimming closer and closer and closer to the islands and to the channels between the, the neighbouring islands in the archipelago. And you might well be wondering why on earth the shark god would want dominion over an island which after all is dry land. Well the thing is, when Dakawaha wished to do so, he could swim up onto the beaches and throw himself onto the sands, not to flop and flail the way most sea-going beasts will when they are beached upon the sands. But as the tide pulled out, his great tail, exposed to the sun's rays, would transform into legs like human legs. And his torso would become like the torso of a human. And where he had his two fins, they would stretch out and go huge, powerful, beefy arms. His head alone remained the head of a shark with its great teeth and its gimlet eyes watching the world around it. And so Dakawaka could be king of both the sea beasts and the land beasts. And his appetite for human flesh when upon the land was as strong as his appetite for it when he was in the water. This is why he wished to go and claim Kadavu Island for his own, to expand his territories yet further. And so into the channel between the great islands he swam, the waters sloshing around him, the other fish darting hither and yon to get out of his way, for they knew the temper that was upon Dakawa. And there, in the distance, were great banks of coral and caves under the ocean waves, and just as creatures upon land can scent each other's approach, so those great behemoths of the ocean wave can sense the approach of other creatures upon the water. And a tentacle began to emerge from the cave, and then another, and then another, huge massive tentacles, each one three times the girth of my waist, which Lord knows is big enough as it is, would emerge from that cave, and behind them behind the enormous bulk of that orangey red body as the octopus god Rokubaka Nikova emerged from the ocean depths in his cave. The great suckers upon the tentacles opening and shutting hungrily like a million mouths. And there the two gods came face to face. And Rokubaka Nikova said to the shark god, who are you to challenge me in my ocean depths? This land, this water, this is mine. For Rokubaku Nekuvitha could emerge upon the ocean, from the ocean onto the land just as Dakawaka could, and he could grow legs and walk half octopus with great tentacles and half like a human, and stalk upon the land and govern 
his territories above water as he could govern his territories below water when he was in his more comfortable shape of a fully fledged octopus with enormous proportions. Well, Dachuwaka would have none of it. He said, I have conquered island upon island upon island. My territories stretch far and wide. There are, I have heard, upon this island of Kadavu, many of these strange human things. And often they go into the oceans. I shall whip up storms, I shall come to spells, I shall crush waves on their ship. I shall sink their ships and I shall feast upon their flesh. And if they do not go to sea often enough, we shall walk upon the land and feast upon them there. Well, the octopus god, who did not have such an, an appetite for human flesh as Dachalacha did, would have none of this. And so these are my people, I will protect them. They serve me and I look after them. You will not be feasting upon them. Enough talk, roared Dachowaka, and lunged in, huge great teeth snashing and snarling, ready to rip tentacle from body. The octopus was not slow in the responding. They thrashed and they toiled, and on the land the humans looked at the waters that had been still and beautiful and blue and calm as the sky above. But a few minutes before, and now were thrashing and boiling and a great torment of ocean waves crashing here and crashing there, and the sky above was beginning to darken with the power of the two gods' magic as they clashed. And, and the humans shook and shivered with fear to see this terrible tumult in the ocean depths. Well, what they could not see was how the fight was going, of course. They could only see the, the splash and the crash of the waves upon the surface, not what's happening down below. They couldn't see the great teeth of Dachawaka ripping into the soft, pulpy flesh of Rokubako Nikava. They couldn't see the great, enormous, thick tentacles of the octopus god wrapping tighter and tighter and tighter around the body of the shark god, dragging him deeper and deeper and deeper. And as you may know, sharks, even when they sleep, must keep moving. For a shark can never be still, lest it drown. And that is a, a piece of knowledge which Rocco Bakonikova had in and of himself as well as you have in it. And as he dragged the great shark got deeper and deeper and deeper, the weight of the octopus so much heavier than the weight of that enormous shark, he held the shark tighter and tighter and tighter in his great eight-limbed grip until they reached the sandy bed of the ocean. And whilst sharks cannot cease to move, octopuses certainly can. And it was the aim of the octopus god to hold Dachowacha as tight as tight could be, in a grip from which he could not move, until he began to drown. And Dachowacha could feel that that the, the, the salt water pouring in through his gills, he could feel his inability to move, leading him closer and closer to the grave. And he roared and he thundered, and try as he might, he could not move away from the octopus's grip. And eventually Dachowaka said, I concede you have won. What is it that you demand of me? What concession, what price? And the octopus god said, from this day forth, I wish you to leave these waters in peace. Let these strange human things upon Kadavu Island swim and sail in peace as long as they stay within the territories of the island waters. Neither you nor any of your many, many, many children are to feast upon the flesh of these humans. If they are daft enough to go beyond your island waters, said Dakawaka, well, said the octopus god. I do not expect you to know where your meal comes from when it's out in the depths of the ocean. You would not know one human from another, one islander from another islander. If they go beyond these territories, they are fair game to you. But within my remit, within my waters, you are to leave them in peace. And just as death was about to exert its icy grip, over the shark god, he said, yes, yes, I agree. My word is given for now and forevermore. Neither I nor my children will feast upon your people. 
and the octopus unwrapped its tentacles and the shark god was off swimming for grim life for indeed it was only by movement that he was able to avoid the grip of death and from that day to this day Dachowaka and his children have kept their word they do not feast in the waters of Kadavu Island tempting sometimes as the the flesh of these strange tailless finless gillless humans are when they go swimming or they fall off a boat or the boat itself sinks those people they may drown but they are never eaten by sharks 